question. What happened on the very first pitch of the 2018 baseball season? Answer, Ian Happ, home run, right field, and we were off. Tons of dingers on the day, but we start with who else? Happ, he was just the second player ever to homer on the first pitch in the first game on the first day of the season. Boston's Dwight Evans was the other in 1986. George Springer, he also hit a Springer dinger, second straight season. He's homered on day one, also the 100th homer of his career. Matt Davidson, who? The guy with three home runs for the White Sox, fourth player to do so on opening day. Dimitri Young, Tuffy Rhodes, George Bell, the others, six homers for the White Sox in all. And we had a pair of walk-off homers. Nick Markakis, five-run comeback for the Brave. Cap, Braves, capped off by his bomb. Adam Jones ending it in the 11th for the Orioles. His seventh career walk-off hit. And of course, Giancarlo Stanton. Two bombs for the Yankees, including one in his very first at bat. Talk about making an entrance. He's the second player in Yankee history behind Roger Maris with a multi-homer debut. More first take right now. So earlier this week, our Jeremy Fowler reported that the Steelers are putting the Le'Veon Bell contract negotiations on hold to focus on free agency in the upcoming NFL draft on Thursday. Bell took to Twitter to send a message to his haters. It's so hard to be a hero in a city that paints you out to be the villain. Stephen A., I know this one hits close to home. It's your squad. Has Le'Veon Bell made himself the villain? Potentially, yes, um, and not intentionally. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not here to excoriate him or anything like that. That's not what I'm doing. What I'm simply pointing out is that Le'Veon Bell is one of the best players in football. He's clearly one of the best running backs. He's clearly one of the better receivers out of, at the running back spot. He's the number two receiver for all intents and purposes on the Pittsburgh Steelers, considering the fact that he was second in receptions behind Antonio Brown. And more importantly, he plays a position where literally they tell you by the time you hit 30, you're on the downside of your career. So at that moment in time, if not before, we will be devaluing you. So when you consider the fact that he's had over four, about 406 touches and he's put in the work and the production and the numbers, he is essentially crying out for recognition for his services to anyone who will listen. What I'm saying to Le'Veon Bell is you don't need to do that anymore. You need to leave that to everybody else. The Darren Woodsons of the world and the Ryan Clarks of the world and the Damian Woodies of the world, along with Max and myself and others. You need to leave that to everybody else. Because if you don't, then the city of Pittsburgh is suddenly going to be, think about it. Remember, this is the Steel City. This is the Steel City, Max. This is a blue collar town. You got people out there that are working their tails off to make ends meet. OK, and you got a guy that made over 12 million last year uh, that could potentially sign a deal that could make him over 15 million now per year. And he wants more money. He deserves it according to what the market says he deserves based on his predictable position and productivity. But when you're talking about <laughs> Joe Public out there, they may embrace it differently if you open your mouth. They heard you during the season. They've heard you after the season. Le'Veon Bell does not need to say another word. We got it. I'm here to tell you he deserves his money. But what he doesn't need to do is alienate the city because if he does that, it could embolden management to use that as an excuse to play hardball with him during negotiations even more so than they're already doing. And when it comes to the NFL, that can have a detrimental effect on you. You just advised Le'Veon Bell publicly, Stephen A., to leave it to members in the media like us to explain to everyone how good he is and how much more money he's worth. And I will do that right now. Running backs okay. who can not only run between the tackles, but catch passes out of the backfield, who you can line up in the slot and on the outside and have a nose for the end zone, those guys are among the MVP candidates in football right now, the way the game has evolved. They once were considered MVP candidates, even when they couldn't catch passes out of the backfield. And now when you add that element to their game, and Le'Veon Bell is the number one back in the game, or the number one guy who plays that position, because often he's a receiver. Um, he is an MVP candidate every year. Now, what a cap does, what salary cap does in sports is align the owner's interests with the fans or the fans' interests with the owners. In other words, the less you pay the player, the better it is 
for the fan because that means there's more money to go around to other players. Now, without the cap, you could pay that player what he's worth and other players what they're worth. But with the cap, you can't. And who gets shortchanged in this? It's the running back. The way the NFL salary structure that exists presently works is your rookie contract underpays you. That happens in a lot of industries. There are certain barriers to entry, hoops to jump through, you know, union even scales where you get more as time goes on. After that rookie contract in the NFL, now you can get paid long term. And remember, the guaranteed money comes from how many years they think you'll be productive because they prorate it over that number of years. Meaning they'll say, here's $50 million because we think it's $10 million a year for the next five years. If they only think you got two years ahead of you, that's $20 million instead of $50 million. Now, you're right, Stephen A., in a, in a, in a blue-collar town like Pittsburgh, million, as soon as you hear that, it's a lot of money, and I get it. But he is not being paid what he's worth. What they do now is they franchise him. They franchise him maybe three times altogether. It means he'll be making a lot of money in those individual years. If he stays healthy and it's a hurt game, you can get hurt at any time without a guaranteed contract. That's a problem. But once it's time for him to collect on his, you know, big, now I, you've used up all the franchise tags. I'm past my rookie contract. Now I'm collecting. Now I'm getting my huge guarantee. The team's going to come to him and say, you're 28 years old. We only think you have a year or two left. We're not going to give you a huge guarantee over a number of years. Running backs get screwed by the CBA in the NFL right now. That is the position more than any other that gets shortchanged. MVP caliber players at their best. Le'Veon Bell is the best and an MVP caliber player every year, but they will not be paid long term like that. And they have shorter careers. Stephen A., because that is good for the fans, right, when you can shortchange a player, that's the reason I'm up here saying the Giants, my team, I love the Giants, should draft Saquon Barkley. Because yeah, running backs what? hit the ground running, give you production right away, but, but, give but, it to you for six, eight years, and you but, never really have to pay them. But, Max, you lost me. What are you trying to say about Le'Veon Bell as it pertains to a, villain, a villain's role in the city of Pittsburgh? What are you trying to say about that, that he's not the villain? Or he that being, he's got to be careful? What are you saying? No, he is being... Well, I, I picked up where you left off, Stephen A. When you said leave it to right. members in the media to explain what's right. going on, and that's what I did. Sure. Le'Veon Bell okay. will be perceived by the fans as a villain because his interest is opposed to their interest. Their interest is to make the Pittsburgh Steelers as good as possible. If you give yeah. a lot of money long term to a running back, that hurts your team because he's not going to be good past and the age of 29 or 30. You, 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 you're absolutely right. But all of that goes out the window and amounts to nothing if he keeps opening his mouth about this same subject. Because at some point the city is saying, we heard you. We understand what you're saying. We can't even deny that you're right, but enough's enough already. And that's what I think he has to be careful of, which is why I don't think he should say another word. The media, his agent, others, even Tomlin to a lesser degree, his teammates, you can do what you have to do to speak up for him. He does not need to speak up for him. You don't want somebody comparing him to Latrell Sprewell, who gets offered a 13 to $15 million contract years ago and says, I can't, I can't accept that. I got to feed my family. You right. don't want that kind of quote associated Although with your name. You just don't. Floyd, Floyd Mayweather also called a contract offer of $2 million a year at a certain or a fight at a certain point with like a guarantee of $12 million, a slave contract. And that's a poor choice of words, just as Latrell sure. Sprewell's was in terms of feeding but his family. But what Floyd Mayweather showed was, in fact, he was going to make a hundred times that in a fight. So he actually turned out to be right. And Le'Veon Bell's point here, I believe, and he said it before, and we took it like, oh, come on, he's not serious. Hey, I'm, it's not just me. It's running backs generally, right? It's like players who play my position. He's right. If the running backs don't start chirping and start making noise and start causing a problem for people, because this is the same in every town, they will never be paid. They have to address this. Yeah, yeah, but we're not saying that he should be quiet. We're saying we heard you, which means you haven't been quiet. You've been speaking, and there comes a moment in time to, sp to stop. Not to mention this fact, Max, I think your analogy of Floyd Money Mayweather is a very poor one. And the reason why it's poor is because ultimately, as a boxer, you're going to reach a point where you have the choice to take your chances and do it yourself, which Floyd ultimately did when he separated from Bob Arum, went 
on his own and did what he did. Le'Veon Bell will never have that choice because the NFL as an institution, as the and Shield, therefore, doesn't allow it to have a choice. It's not a collective bargaining therefore, process. You know, you, the boxer represents himself. The football player doesn't get to do that. And therefore, he has to keep talking. You're saying stop talking. Stephen A., if you're Le'Veon Bell and you're going to be paid, like oh, you're going to be portrayed as the villain no matter what, you're going to have to pick your poison here. Do you want the money or do you not care about the way you're perceived by everyone? He's not, not getting a long. If you were the Steelers, would you give Le'Veon Bell a long-term deal or would you franchise him again and again until he's 28 years old, 27, 28 years old, and you can give him a much lower guarantee in terms of the dollars? It well, makes depends, sense from, from, from a business point of view for the Steelers that, to do that to him. To, to answer your question directly, that depends on my mentality, my attitude is to take care of the people that take care of you. If I'm, and it's not based on history. It's based on projection as well. I understand from a business, hardcore business perspective, you know, you got to be about to, you know, you franchise tag somebody, you keep them on board. But there's a reason that Adam Schefter came on my radio show just a couple of days ago. Stephen A. Smith radio show, ESPN radio, nationwide, every weekday from 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, by the way. Okay? You mean to just tell to me I can know. hear you on the radio, yes, 1 to 3 p.m. Oh, Eastern Standard on ESPN Radio? Across the plus, country. Two, 250 plus markets across the United States of America plus Sirius XM Got Channel it. 80. Here's the point that I'm trying to make though. Adam Schefter comes and he says, hey, you know what? You got to move. He said you have to move Odell Beckham. You either have to marry him or you have to break up because you can't franchise Big him difference. because it would be a disaster. All, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. I'm just using that as a point to highlight. Excuse me. You don't want to fail to take care of somebody that takes care of you. But you know like what, Stephen a, I don't think that applies to running backs. Wideouts who are 26 years old, sure, right? 25, 26 years old, they might be amazing, elite for another seven or eight years. Running backs who, by the time they're you're done franchise tagging them, are 27, 28 years old, are likely not going to be worth the money you're going to pay them if you give them True, a long term deal. True, but year but Le'Veon is saying he's not a running back. Le'Veon's argument is that he's not just a running back; he's a receiver as well. Right, but I don't think they're going to treat him that way, unfortunately. Based on past behavior, they haven't, and we'll see if they do. But it's not just Le'Veon Bell. It's Ezekiel Elliott. It's Todd Gurley. These are all M – and it, and it might be wind up being Saquon Barkley. MVP caliber players, as important to their offense as most quarterbacks. More, you know, MVP in the conversation. They Year in and year out, yeah. these kind of names, they will never be paid that way. And that's why Le'Veon Bell is chirping. I can't fault him for it. But you're more apt to win a Super Bowl with a stud running back than you are a stud wide receiver. I get that's right. just the and, here and, and now. But they should be going all in right now, the Steelers squad. And, by the way, partly Molly, because you don't and, have and to pay Molly him. and Max. Yeah. I'm not I'm not faulting Le'Veon in any way. I'm just saying watch it because it may work against you. Of course. And may shortchange you in the end. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Le'Veon has 129 scrimmage yards per game since entering the league in 2013. Most of any player during that span. Up next, guys, Mark Cuban in more hot water after a new story about how he handled another workplace situation. We'll give you all the details. The guys will react. Plus, Steph Curry is on the way. So much to get into with him about the Warriors' playoff hopes and how KD handled his ejection last night. Stay here. Max, Max Kellerman, did you know that our show can now be streamed on demand?